through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 231. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD uh, rundown mm -hmm. for the week of February 19th. Yes. <laughs> um, it's a pretty solid week overall. Yeah. Really, really good stuff coming out this week, both TV and film. Mm -hmm. A Which lot is... of new stuff, some old stuff as yeah. well. You know, February is generally not good for theatrical releases, but at least it's good to know uh, that home up, ownership yeah. we're, we're making up for this week. Skyrocketing. Yep. First up, we're going to talk about my favorite film Ooh, of 2012. Look at that. And that is Argo. Yeah. This is the Ben Affleck directorial third, was yeah. that junior-ish? Is yeah. that a term for that? <laughs> see, yeah, sophomore, uh, yeah, I guess. Junior I don't know. effort? Triumvirate? I yeah, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is it's his third movie that he's yeah. directed. <laughs> and this is, tells the story of a group of Americans who are trapped in Iran. Mm -hmm. um, and he is sent there under the guise of being a movie producer, yes. trying to extract them. Based on real events. Yes. Um... You know, it's. I guess it's appropriate that this is coming out right before the Academy Awards, because sadly Ben Affleck was not nominated for yes. Best Director, even though the he's won essentially every yeah. directorial opportunity. Yeah, like far. Golden Globes, every, and, well, BAFTA. Yeah, like everything Directors other Guild. than that, he's been cleaning house yeah. with this movie. And it's winning a lot of Best Pictures as well. So mm -hmm. if it wins Best Picture and he doesn't win Best Director, I don't know. But. They'll be kicking say, themselves in the 2020s. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, exactly. I'll be kicking them. I'll be kicking them in the 2020s. Um, but I, I love the movie, and it's it's coming out a very solid release. Mm -hmm. You got Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, all in one, which we're on board with. Mm -hmm. You have a um, a commentary track, a feature-length picture in picture with eyewitness accounts awesome. from people who were actually there and experienced the very cool. and stuff like that. You have a uh, rescued from Tehran. We were there with interviews with the actual people involved with this Look whole at that, thing. Man, how cool is that? That's pretty cool. You've got. Uh, That's what I think stuff based on true story doesn't have enough is like a connection with people that were there. Well, how about this one? Uh, absolute authenticity, discussing you know what was real and trying to maintain the authenticity. Because awesome. if you've seen the movie, they have that end credit sequence where you look at the people who are in the mm, movie mm -hmm. versus the actual people, and the like. There are elements like that, or different scenes that they mm, had set mm -hmm. up, and you look at photos versus what they filmed, and it's like a match, identical yeah. match. It's pretty amazing. Very much reminiscent of is it City of God that does that in the trailer as well, where it shows. Um, I, what am I thinking? I'm thinking of something else. Never I mind. know. I know. Sin City does yeah, was okay. very much yeah. of recreating. I, I don't remember myself. what I'm thinking. It's, it's irrelevant. Yeah. Moving on. All right. Some other movie that they did that. A couple other things. There's a CIA and the Hollywood connection, which is very much about how the yeah. CIA extracted these people mm -hmm. from there, mm -hmm. which is cool. And, of course, Escape from Iran, a discussion of the Hollywood option, mm. as those of you who have seen the film will know about. Yes. Uh, great film. Very solid release. You know, I can't wait to see what Ben Affleck does next. And I know. I agree. Uh, some interesting things. I, I thought that uh, there was originally some early criticism based on how the Canadian government was viewed mm. in the film. And after some Canadian screenings, Ben Affleck actually went back and rewrote and really? retooled scenes to make it less... Like they were not important and more Interesting. relevant, which I think is neat. And also, just one of those things that you know, I think in today's day and age, we always think of so much stuff in post production done, just mm. fixed and make things look this sure. way. But in order to make the movie feel f feel like it was in the seventies, Ben Affleck shot it on regular film, cut the frames in half, blew up those images two hundred percent to increase their graininess. Wow. And he also borrowed camera movements and bustling office scenes from all the president's men for de scenes depicting the CIA headquarters. Very cool. Considering it would be appropriate time for him. You yeah. gotta love that guy, man. Maybe maybe the Academy will be smart and he'll get a write in nomination <laughs> for uh, Argo, but you know, directorial. I, it's, or it's it'll just, just be yet another thing that the media gets to talk about about why the Oscars are irrelevant because everybody will talk about how amazing Argo was and how it didn't get anything. I will be talking about yeah. that. Yeah. Real critics and Spencer. Ooh. Oh, ooh, snap. Ooh. Burn. You notice I didn't put me anywhere in that because yeah. I'm, I'm neither real critic <laughs> nor Spencer. <laughs> oh, snap. You are like, you're absolutely right about that. Let's go to the world of yes. the small screen mm -hmm. and Eat talk about screen. Game of Thrones yes. Season 2. This is obviously the, the second book. Yes. It's this is uh, Clash of Kings. But they're, they're they're very good. I mean, I'm, I've never read the books. You've read the books. I have. They're they're very good about doing each season yes. as a season of the show, yes. or each book as a season of the show. Yeah. So uh, this, this season care has a few elements that happened in the third book that they incorporated, mm. but they're only more like foreshadowing and longer scale stories. Nothing that's like 
you know, gonna really ruin it, but they brought up a few things, like if you hadn't read the second book, and you saw the second season, and then you read the book, there'd be parts that you were like, oh, that doesn't okay. happen, and then later on. Sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of HBO in terms mm -hmm. of the releases, that's because this is one of the few TV shows you can get on Blu-ray, DVD, yes. and digital copy all yes. together, which is great. I mean, I guess, it, as we've spoken before, it makes a difference that it's only, uh, like, 12 or 13 episodes. I think it's 10. Yeah. 10 episodes? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, th there's a very much smaller episode count, mm -hmm. so that helps. But, you know... They actually did a pretty solid race. I oh, mean, yeah. remember when we talked about the collector's edition, that was a little bit underwhelming. Exactly. It was like throwing in like a little special collector's mm -hmm. edition rock or yeah. something like that. <laughs> Here you go, get a fake dragon, dragon egg. egg I yeah. think it was <laughs> but this one, you know, you have um, creating the Battle of Blackwater Bay. Which 30, is so awesome. 30 minute documentary on the trials and tribulations of putting together one of Game of Thrones' most intense episodes. Mm -hmm. You have audio commentaries. Uh, all episodes will have a, an accompanying commentary track by stars such as Peter Dinklage, Amelia Clark. Uh, producers David Beninoff, awesome, uh, D and DB Weiss, and mm -hmm. George R R Martin. Nice, so got some good people there. I think he wrote the Blackwater Bay episode specifically. There's, I think he's done at least one episode in each of the seasons so far that he wrote the actual episode adaptation, which is nice to know that like he's not just getting a distant. He's still oh, hands he's, on he's, it. He's way in. I mean, yeah. there's a featurette with him about the religions of Westeros, yeah. which he's involved with. And then if you get the if you have a Blu-ray, there's exclusive yes, features to that, which such are worth as. It. Uh, uh, history and lore, a series of animated history lessons that will reveal the great events that have shaped Westeros and the lands beyond the narrow sea. Mm -hmm. Expect detailed explanations of the nine free cities, the Andals, and the first men. Yes, which is a lot of cool lore that is slowly revealed in the books through various exposition and characters talking about it. So it's neat to get a little animated well, shorts. It also features illustrations from Game of Thrones storyboard artist Will Simpson. Very, so, very nice. A whole bunch of other stuff that but you know, uh, very solid TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, definitely one of the most popular TV shows yep. on television at this point. Yep. And so, third season, 331, 13 coming out. Yeah, I'm sure they're, they're getting this one well out in advance, which yes. is good. But you know, I mean, you want to give all those people a chance to watch the first two seasons and get fully frothing at the mouth. I finally got around to watching the first one, so I'm looking forward to checking out the second one. Spencer's finally joining the party. I, I, I had, I had. <laughs> Uh, a, a secondary party yes. who was limiting my ability yes. to watch it because she wanted to read the books first. Yes. Let me yes. say, I'll pass the blame on yes. her. Yes, okay, okay. I always like pointing out that one of the things that's neat about this series, because uh, if you're one of the problems with the actual books is how long it's taken for them all to come out. I think the first one was written in like 96 mm. and the fifth one just came out like last year or something. Mm. So I mean it's been a while. Is that George R. R. Martin has actually spoken to the, those two producers, D.B. Weiss and uh, Benazov? David Beninoff. Yeah, Beninoff. Uh, he's actually told them how he wants the book series secretly to end in mm. case he dies before, before he finishes like, it so that it can continue the show and not just have to abandon it. So those cool. two people are the, probably some of the only people on the planet wow. other than him that know how the series that's ends. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. None of that uh, dragon tattoo stuff. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah there's like ten books or, or something. Or Rob, Robert Jordan who yeah. died and his son picked up the series yeah. to finish it um, because he died. Yeah, yeah no, Godfather 2. They just yeah. kept going with those ones. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's keep yeah. it in yeah. house. Yeah, Let's please. keep it in house. <laughs> Moving right along, another film from this year. Mm -hmm. A scary movie. Ooh. We're talking Sinister. Mm -hmm. This is the film starring Ethan Hawke. Yes. About a man who discovers a, I don't know what you call it, a bean yes. in these murder videos. Mm -hmm. Snuff films. Snuff films. Thank you, 8mm. Um and once you become aware of it, much like the ring, mm. it starts to come after you. So Boogly! <laughs> uh, pretty creepy film, but you know, it it sadly only comes in Blu-ray, DVD, individual sort of stuff. Was you know? it kind of indie? Was it? Who released uh, I don't it? think it was Summit. I mean, okay. not that indie. All right. I mean, Just it's, curious. it's unfortunate that they chose to release it that way. But, <laughs> you know, they, it, it's not it's not necessarily a bad release. Like for instance, there's um, audio commentary with director Scott Derrick. There's another commentary with uh, writer Scott Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill. Hmm. So he's director and writer, sorry. Okay. Um, so he did his own own commentary track and then one with the other writer huh. for it. So that's cool. You have uh, one about true crime authors, which Ethan Hawke plays a true that's crime right. he's researching. author. researching. Yeah, yeah, so he moves into the house where a murder occurred. Okay. The last murder on one of these videotapes. He How discovers sinister. them in the attic. Yes, quite sinister. Titular line. <laughs> um, similar, there's the one called Living in a House of Death. So, you know, what it's like to actually live in a house where a murder Very has cool. occurred. Yeah. I, I would not like to do that. I don't I don't think I would either. No. Uh, 
uh, it also has, you know, deleted scenes. So mm-hmm. in terms of scary movies, I, I wouldn't say it's as creepy as something like, you know, Paranormal Activity or Insidious or something yes. like that. It's got creepy sequences that sort of like wind down. There's some calm and then they go back up, whereas mm-hmm. those other ones are like unrelenting creepiness. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's decent. Yeah. So. Yeah, we like Ethan Hawke. He's not too bad. And I do have something for, you know, the concept of true crime. Yeah. Like things like, you know, Jack the Ripper and all that stuff mm-hmm. still sort of fascinate me. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, reality is oftentimes stranger than fiction. So. Yeah. The, I think the, the creepiest ones are the ones that are real. That's the stuff, you know, like In Cold Blood. Yes. Jack the Ripper, all that sort mm-hmm. of stuff. So. The Shining. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Woo, go, go check out The Overlook. Red Rum. Yeah. Oh. Don't, yeah, don't go there. <laughs> yeah. I'll work and no play and expense or go crazy. I'm just saying. Finally, perhaps the um, perhaps the most interesting release of yeah. the week, and depending Probably. on how you look at it, a classic film mm-hmm. from 1954. We're talking the Criterion release of On the Waterfront. Yes, Marlon Brando classic. Yes. You know, it's... I mean, it's been over 50 years since it's this crazy. come out. Brando's obviously died. Yes. I mean, this is probably, I mean, it's got to be top two or three of the works he did in his life. You know, Definitely. Godfather's up there. Yeah, I mean, Streetcar it, Named Desire. Yeah, up if you there. pretty much like just don't look at old man Brando. This mm. has got to be like easily in in like top films ever. Even if you're cool with old man That's Brando, true. are you going to? That's not that much. <laughs> yeah. Island yeah. Doctor Moreau. <laughs> yeah, no. I think pretty much. Basically, Godfather yeah. is pretty much it. Is yeah, old Brando that <laughs> since like 1980, uh, Holland, like it's been much. It's been a little bit rough for him, but uh, you know, he, he did have his his glory days. Mm-hmm. There was a time when he was a very attractive looking man, and this yes. is definitely during that period. I mean, you know, you've got Criterion releasing this, so you've got like a new 4K digital restoration Dang. with uncompressed manorial soundtrack. Uh, you have alternate presentations of this restoration in both uh, 1.85 and 1.33 aspect ratios. Wow. So that's pretty cool. That's, yeah, wow. Um, you have <laughs> audio Options. commentary by authors Richard Stickel and Jeff Young. Okay. You have a doc, an hour-long documentary about Ilya Kazan, uh, outsider, uh. the director of the movie, obviously. Okay. Uh, you have interviews with actor... Eva Marie Saint. Mm -hmm. You have an interview with director Elia Kazan from 2001. Wow. You have a uh, criterion documentary on uh, the most famous scene of the movie, considering colon mastering the method. Mm. Could have been a contender, you know. Um, The taxi cab scene probably also. Yeah. In there. I mean, new interview with longshoreman. Thomas Hanley, an actor in the film, interview with author James T. Fisher, yeah, and the real life people and places behind the yeah, film. Yeah, I was going to say, it's based on actual stuff that happened, if I remember, and I was reading earlier, uh, after the film came out, the FBI actually went and shut down a bunch of like dock unions that were mm. being run by the mafia, because basically after watching this film, they're like, oh yeah. I think that's really it's, actually happening. I mean, it's just, it's crazy how much stuff. There's another documentary about the making of the film, like, it's... I mean, this is, you think Criterion and their great editions. This has got to be one of the best Criterion yes. editions yes. and one of the most classic films yes. in Hollywood history. Like, mm-hmm. it's just with one of the most famous actors yeah. in the history of Hollywood. It's, it's crazy, too, because, you know, sometimes we think about, like, f- super famous actors just either being, like, really good method actors or mm. just being really serious in their role. I find it interesting that when this movie is being made, as part of his contract, Marlon Brando only worked till four every day, and then he would leave and go see his analyst because his mother had died recently. Mm. Wow. And the conflicted actor was in therapy to revol- resolve these issues with his parents. Uh, interestingly enough, for the film's classic scene between Rod Steiger and Marlon Brando in the back of the cab, all of Steiger's, Steiger's close-ups were filmed after Brando had left for the day because he had to go to his analyst. So these lines were read by one of the crew members. Hmm. And Steiger remained very bitter about that for many years and often would mention it in interviews. I mean... I gotta say, you know, it's it's frequently mentioned that, you know, of his generation, Marlon Brando was arguably yeah. the best actor. And it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, as we spoke about, you know, as his career sort of tailed off, mm-hmm. much like Pacino and De Niro, like, yeah. their careers have sort of changed off as mm-hmm. they got, like, less and less quality parts and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Over. And it's it's sort of unfortunate that some people forget how talented of an actor oh, he yeah. really was. And like, you watch this in Streetcar, and you're like, oh, that's why he could say whatever he wanted in Hollywood for, like, 20 years. Yeah, and then you <laughs> think about that, like, 
20 years after this is when Godfather mm -hmm. came out. So yeah. this is like, yeah. like that shows you just how long his career mm -hmm. was, sustained greatness. So he, I think he won an Oscar for this movie, and it was, it, I think, if I remember correctly, he wasn't there, and it got lost, and years later it was found at a London auction and returned to him. Excellent. Just weird, weird trivia. He's a great, very interesting mm -hmm. dude. You know, I, I would love to see a documentary about him. Someday. Oh God, yeah. Now that he's dead, not already yeah. one. Hmm. Hollywood, listen to MacGuffin. Get there's on probably it. already one. No, get, make a good one though that we would have heard about. See, because if there's one that we haven't, clearly it sucks. Yes, because we're such knowledgeable tastemakers, Spencer. Yes. We're walking, yeah. talking tastemakers. <laughs> and that being said, join us next time for a discussion of alien movies mm -hmm. in honor of the release of Dark Skies. Yes. As always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Sti or no, Blip.tv. That's right. We're on Miro. Mm -hmm. We're on Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some badges. Show them off to your friends. Leave us some reviews on iTunes, mm -hmm. and uh, we will catch you later. T-1000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.